Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I apologize, I haven't posted uh, many videos in a while, but that's gonna change. I have two or three nice projects coming up over the next few weeks that I'll be posting more about. i um, been busy with work and life and you guys know how it is. So we're going to talk today about a heavily modified Scout XL. Um, it's a very great flying stock right out of the box. Uh, of course, it's a build kit. So as it's built, it's an amazing flyer but I happen to lose my Scout XL. I did a previous version of that, that the flights of those plane, the big yellow one. And I was at flight test last summer. And if you were there, it was incredibly hot and humid. So just on a basic maneuver, the foam and the glue, and the combination of that and the heat, it just folded up on me. So I had all the hardware, I had all the servos and motors. So I decided to rebuild it. And this is what I did. Now, I'm not a plane designer. I have no idea how to build a plane from scratch, but I can make some cosmetic modifications and things that make it more fun and individual to you. And to me, that really enhances the hobby for me. So we'll talk about some of those things and any modifications I make that are 3D printed or uh, wood DXF designed. I'll upload to Thingiverse if you guys uh, find it interesting and want to incorporate some of it or modify it into some of your builds. It's all good. Well, you know, as long as you enjoy it, get it out there. So um, we're also gonna talk an overview of some of the equipment I use, some of the software, some of the uh, hardware machines and things because I don't have a shop. I am not a rich guy. I don't make money off of this. I just like to build in my basement for my own mental well-being. And uh, when the kids are away or the wife are away, I'm down here playing in my basement, building stuff. And it just makes life a little bit more fun for me. And hopefully it does for you as well. So uh, here's what I got and enjoy. And let me know if you have any questions or comments down below. Thanks a lot. So as you can see, the wings are heavily modified. They're quite a bit wider at the tips than they are at the root. And the original Scout wings were kind of wider in the rear section where these are wider up at the front. I really didn't know what it was gonna do. Um, hopefully it didn't affect the aerodynamics too much because the original was a great flyer, but I just wanted to try something a little bit different. This is the 3D printed center support for the wing spar, which uses a combination of um, 3D printed plastic, I think I use Tough PLA, and carbon fiber uh, archery arrow shafts. I did design in an eight inch dihedral, which is about as close as I could determine from the actual uh, Scout XL plans. And I designed it uh, so that it's all the way through, so you can run any cabling and wiring through there. Uh, the shafts bottom out here. And it does have a clearance port in the bottom to run the uh, servo leads down through into the fuselage of the plane. So it's made to print standing up on one end and uh, without any supports, you should be able to print it all just in one setup on your 3D printer. This is what the completed wing support looks like. I didn't get a picture of it before I assembled the plane, but you have the three 3D printed pieces here. The end pieces I did design uh, with through holes so you can run them either inside or outside the wing servo and the carbon fiber arrow shafts are oriented towards the leading edge of the wing so to get them out of the way of the servos which protrude down into this area right about here and you can make the struts of uh, the shafts as long as you like i think i made mine about 12 or 13 inches long um so depending on how much support or how little support you want in the wing or how much arrow shaft material you have you can customize that length there and it all should work. So they're through and then the center support is through. So all of your leads can drop down through the center into the fuselage to connect to your uh, receiver. Um, the tail has been uh, reshaped, both the horizontal and vertical stabilizers. And also the body panels. There are a couple of uh, foam board panels on the top of the front fuselage and the rear fuselage that come up into a rib just to give it a little bit of a different shape. It wasn't adding too much weight, but I just kind of, I like the way it looked from the side there. And then there's a 3D printed um, motor mount battery tray with a turbo prop exhaust and all of that will be available on Thingiverse, um, three millimeter screws. The cell isn't much different than what I had on the original version of this, which collapsed uh, during Flight Fest and the heat. It's a 3542 motor, which gives it plenty of power. It runs on 4S4000. And I'll flip it over and we can look at the landing gear. Now, one of the things I didn't anticipate is that because I made the wings so much wider, they have to actually slide through the fuselage because this is the original version and not the version two, which has a removable wing. So I had to cut the wing slots quite a bit longer. 
And so I came up with these little gussets to cover up the opening and kind of made it look a little pseudo stealth on the front. This is kind of a revisionist history of a, of a, like a World War I German plane. Uh, 3D printed a little cockpit with a bust of a pilot there. And uh, let's flip it over and look at the other side. So here you can see the bottom side of the plane. Um, when I did the flight videos the other day, I found out the eighth inch wire was a little bit weak. I don't know whether it's the temper of the steel, but it bent quite a bit. So I made up this little strig mounted assembly here, which still has to be flight tested, but hopefully that will prevent the gear from spreading out because of the eighth inch wing wire. Now you can see the 3D printed battery tray motor cell I put in here. I did a three millimeter balsa plywood, or not balsa, but plywood board in there to hold up with the heat a little bit better than 3D printed plastic firewall. For the gear assembly, I designed a quick release latch here. So you can just pull this orange string and it's connected to this Velcro key which is attached to the bottom of the mount. And so I can pull the mount directly out. I've had it fall out a few times before I came up with the key. So when I can drop that back in there, insert the key and it locks the, uh, the entire gear mechanism in there pretty well. I also uh, designed these 3D printed hubcaps for the stock wheels. They were just plastic white before and I think it adds a little bit of a nice little bit of flair to the gear assembly without adding too much weight. Now I can insert the key, uh, the Velcro hooks up on the bottom side, and the gear mechanism is locked in. doesn't seem to rattle much, and uh, it stays in there pretty securely. Pretty happy with how that came out. And finally, down here towards the tail end, there's a little support for the elevator uh, servo linkage. Stops the uh, flexing and bowing of that long, relatively long rod tail skid didn't change, uh, the wings, uh, gussets are there, and this bottom hatch didn't change from version 1, so that'll be on Thingiverse as well. All test.
A little bit of a touchdown there. May have bent the gear. Let's bring her down and uh, see if we can land without hitting the prop. <laughs> Oops. I lost a uh, fairing out here somewhere. Uh, that's what you get for uh, for getting a little bit too too wild. Uh, let's see. It's not bad. You'll see if I can find my other wheel skirt. Yeah. <laughs> so you got my wing tip? Yeah. You have any film here, do you? Oh, oh, I burned it too. Oh. Well, good thing you've got a heavy gold scout. Parts here.